Hello. Good morning. It's morning in America. No, it's morning in Canada. A fantastic country Canada has proven to be. So we are no in... Now left onto Lake Louise Drive. Oh my gosh. Do not interrupt me. We are in Lake Louise here in Banff National Park and I now am heading... turn left onto Fairview Road. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. Headed over to the park and ride because I'm going to take a shuttle bus up to Lake Moraine, which is that beautiful lake where you see all of the classic pictures from Banff. I'm very excited this morning. In 500 feet, turn right onto Pinnacle Drive. No, I'm gonna do a U-turn because I'm an American and I'm ignorant like that. Now turn left onto Fairview Road. Now Jeez. turn right onto Lake Louise I, Drive. I don't, you know. What the fuck? <sighs> you know. So, head up, take shuttle bus. Gonna take shuttle bus up. Probably won't do too much hiking because there was a fresh coat of snow last night, and I do not have any snow gear whatsoever. Um, I actually need to try and dig my other shoes out of my suitcase so that I can actually do this short little hike up to the lake. But needless to say, I'm very excited because this is one of the places that I've always wanted to go. And I um, really hope that I get some really good views. It's kind of cloudy and kind of foggy, so we'll see what it's like. I might have to spend a couple hours up there just to get the good views that I'm looking for, but I'm perfectly fine with that because I don't really have an end goal for today necessarily. Um, if I can get the pictures and the views that I want, then I'll probably just head up, take the pictures, do a quick little hike, and then come back. Or I might hang out for a few hours. I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll see, though. I'll take videos. I'm gonna eat my salmon bagel real quick. Make sure that I'm ready to go. Yeah! So I'm a little mad at myself for being initially apprehensive about going and making this detour down here to Banff, but now that I have, I am definitely very happy that I did because that was incredible, amazing, outstanding, incredible. So now we're on our way to Calgary. It's only about 97 miles. We're leaving a 77% charge on my Tesla, otherwise known as Susitna. So we'll get there with plenty of charge. Um, I haven't looked at the DC fast chargers yet, but honestly, depending on what the exact state of charge is when we get there, I might not even charge in Calgary. I might try to push on past that. Uh, but I definitely need to stop off in Calgary, hit the gym, take a shower, and I might stop and do some laundry because it's starting to smell in here, um, especially with the dirty socks. So I think a laundry stop may be in my immediate future. We'll have to see, but onward to Calgary. Maybe a, McDon maybe a McDonald's or a Tim Hortons if there's one along the way because I am a little hungry.
Maybe. So I've never driven through Calgary before, but there's actually like a legitimate downtown here. I did not know that Calgary was like a major city. That's kind of cool. Normally when I do this drive, I'm either on 90 through Montana or I'm taking the Northern route through Saskatchewan. So this is kind of cool. I like your trees, Calgary. I like your trees. They're very colorful, very nice. <laughs> so again, I forgot to make a video because when I got to Calgary, I really had to pee. So instead of making something, I just grabbed my gym bag and ran into the gym. But I took a shower, I got changed, as you can see from my new shirt. Um, so we got to Calgary with 37% battery, we went 125 miles. We averaged 249 watt hours per mile, which is actually pretty fantastic. Um, it's mostly flat from here across like a good portion of Canada. Uh, this is kind of like the Northern Great Plains area starting. So I'm going to go find some food because I need to get some food in me because I'm hungry. And then I'm going to, while I'm eating, take a look and see where I want to go because the option is I can either continue across Canada and then cross either down into Vermont or cross over at Niagara Falls, which I haven't been to Niagara Falls in a while. So I'm actually thinking it might be a really good, um, really good opportunity to do that. Or I could just go south, cross into the US, and then cut across 90. But I know if I go across Canada, I think the electric rates are slightly cheaper per kilowatt hour, especially once you convert it to US dollars. And then I don't think that there are any tolls. I don't think there are any toll roads. In terms of if I had to take 90, there are certain sections, especially through like Ohio and Indiana where there are toll roads, and I really don't wanna to have to pay tolls. So let's go find some food. And we'll go. Or maybe stick around. I don't know. We'll see. I have a friend that lives here in Calgary. And she's saying she might be free for dinner. But I don't... I don't know. I don't know. A little longer than a few minutes later. I did something bad. I went to the place that has ice cream. And I got another snowstorm. Blizzard. Hope I can say that on YouTube. I don't know. So I have decided that I need a hotel to stay in because I need to do laundry because some of my laundry, some of these clothes are smelling. Ooh. So I need a nice bed to sleep in because as much as I love this mattress, um, I need a bed to actually spread out in. Uh, I want a nice hot, long shower. This hotel also has a pool. So maybe I'll take a dip in the pool because I also brought my swimming trunks with me and I need to do laundry. So there's a hotel that I booked up in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. It's a very strange town name to me, but I'm gonna stop off at a supercharger here. Shouldn't be there for more than like 10 minutes because um, I just need to top up real quick just to be able to get there. It's 110 miles, 117 in the tank right now, according to my test Syrah. So we'll stop off at the supercharger, plug in, should be there more than like 10 minutes and then head up to the hotel. I'm gonna eat this ice cream real quick because I was craving. Love it. Alaskans eat more ice cream than anyone else. Look it up. <laughs> that is not correct. So this supercharger has a wait. It looks like it's about 20 minutes. So I'm going to run into this mall here and I'm assuming that's the reason why there's a wait because it's a pretty large and very busy looking mall. So I'm going to run in, use the bathroom, and then I'm going to go over and plug in. Hopefully that'll be enough time for the people to clear out, because I don't want to be here forever. Ooh, nice Scion. Very nice. You know, I think Scion, just as an aside, I think the tragedy of Scion is very interesting, <laughs> because that brand had a lot of promise. Basically, Toyota created it with the intention of bringing over Japanese like not quite K cars, but slightly larger versions of the Japanese K cars that Toyota sells in, you know, that Toyota sells in Japan. And you know, if they had just developed a unique, they had such a unique design language and their interiors were really awesome. 
And I kind of wish that Toyota had put a little bit of money into them and maybe even like essentially made Scion into like a Corolla sub brand, if you will. I don't know. There's so much promise there, especially now with electric vehicles coming out. I feel like Scion would be a great, I feel like that's a great opportunity for Toyota to relaunch Scion as an all electric brand. I digress. All right, bathroom time. So I've been waiting for like 15 minutes for the supercharger here at, let me take a look and see where exactly we are. No, stop. So we're here, the Chrysiron Mall. I think that's what this place is called in Rocky View, Alberta. We're waiting about 15 minutes and there was one that wasn't working and then a Model X pulled up and plugged in and it started working right away. So I wonder if that's like a model specific issue or maybe the guy in the Model 3 just wasn't adept at connecting it. I'm not entirely sure what was happening. But just sitting here waiting for a supercharger, I looked and I... I was really hoping that I could make this work without having to supercharge, but I'm down. I would get to the hotel with negative 3%, and I really don't want to have to limp along like I did the other day. So I'm just going to wait for this to open up. I think this is a version 2, because it says 150 kilowatts, so I'm not going to be charging very fast but hopefully it shouldn't have to be more than 15 minutes anyway. Luckily, it's looking like it's only 50 cents a kilowatt hour, so not too bad. On the plus side, everyone here seems very friendly, and they seem like they take good care of their Teslas. I don't see them with, like, big scratches or dents or anything. It's something that I noticed when I was back in Massachusetts is a lot of the cars out there, they seem to, like, have a lot of scratches and dents and just general, like, damage on them, so maybe it's just an East Coast mm. thing. Oh, look, one's moving. I think. Yeah, no, ugh. maybe. morning welcome to what is technically day eight well i guess not technically day eight so technically this would be day 10 because today is tuesday october october 3rd i had to take a look and figure out what that was but we're gonna call this day eight because we're on the road for day eight so i hit the hay at the hotel and Woke up the next day and decided, you know what, I, I need a break. I need a break from driving. I want to explore this little town of Red Deer, Alberta, and just spend some time and hang out. So that's what I did. I um, actually spent two days here. I was here Sunday and Monday. You can probably tell because my facial hair is a little bit longer. It's a little bit longer and a little bit more wild. So spent two days here, went on little hikes. Went to a little local farmer's market that was really cool. Went to a pumpkin patch. Maybe I'll like string in some videos or something through this section. I have no idea what I'm going to do. But a lot of fun and I really think that I needed it because I was, I was getting to a point where I was frustrated with being on the road so much. Um, but I think even more than that, I was like almost losing interest, if that makes sense. Because spending so much time on the road and, you know, dealing with, especially through the Yukon and upper british columbia like all the charging issues and how long it took which is kind of frustrating so i'm excited to get back on the road because now we are tesla superchargers all the way the entire way and i do want to i want to take a second and just say part of the reason why i'm making this video why i'm making this series is because i not only want to show what is possible with an electric vehicle but i also want to show that things get better as infrastructure improves, right? So we went through a part of North America that is pretty well traveled, the Alcan Highway, but there's almost the, the charging infrastructure up there is pretty lousy. But now we're getting into a part of North America, especially Southern Canada and the US, where there's the Tesla superchargers. And that's going to make things so much easier. And I really want to try and contrast that. And I hope that I will have captured that in this video 
I don't think I did the best job of cata cataloging like how slow the charging was, the process of plugging in the CCS adapter. I don't think I did the best job of that, but hopefully as we get to the Tesla superchargers and I'm just plugging in, sitting there for 20 minutes and then rocketing on, it'll become more apparent. So to whereas it took us seven days to cover 2,300 miles, it's probably only gonna take another two days. <laughs> that is not correct. To cover the last 2,000 miles, because it's about 4,500 miles, and we've gone 2,367 miles so far. So it's gonna pick up pretty quickly. And that's part of the reason why I didn't really mind taking the gap and, you know, kind of just hanging out here in this town for a couple days, because I knew that once I hit the road again, other than stopping for food, restroom, and using the gym so that I can shower so I'm not, like, stinking, um, it gets better. So we are gonna head out. We have about 71% on the clock there. So we've gone 2,367 miles, 3,800 miles in total on the odometer. And average, honestly, the watt hour per mile average for this trip of 266 is pretty fantastic, actually. I... 366. So our total, our average, has been 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. And that's going through the Rockies, that's going in temperatures that are, you know, 20, 30 degrees at times. So that's pretty amazing. Um, just kind of speaks to the efficiency of Tesla. Now, I'm not going to lie, there are some problems with this car. And probably once I get to the first or second Tesla supercharger location today i'm going to talk about them i'm going to point some things out that have kind of been bothering me um but i'm gonna get on the road <sighs> also just a side note i've really gotten into a show called the sandman while i've been here i've watched through episode four i know it's a little bit of an older show well 2022 so it's not old but you know whatever uh, i'm fighting myself because i really want to watch it but i can't watch it while i'm driving uh all right getting on the road all right so i have gone ahead and just plugged in Winnipeg, Manitoba, because I think that's where I'm going to aim for. We're supposed to get there at 309 tonight. That'll be fun. But at this point, we're just going to go for it. So this is about 550 miles, if I recall correctly. So the first supercharger stop it wants me to do is just outside of... What is this town? Oh, of course it's not going to tell me. Just outside of Calgary at Stratmore, Alberta. So we're going to get there with roughly 18% on the battery, and we'll be there for 25 minutes. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I mean, and that, like, we're at a point where I can just plug in a destination that I want to get to at the end of the day, and it's going to tell me exactly where I need to go, how long I'm going to stay there, so it's going to tell me how much per battery percentage roughly I'll have when I get there, and how long we're going to be. This Whitewood charger stop of 50 minutes. I'm assuming that's probably a version 2. That'll be interesting. Alright, just wanted to show this. Off. We're off. Bye. Well, hello! Welcome to the Supercharger in Strathmore, Alberta. So, let's go plug in. I'm just gonna demonstrate again how ridiculously easy this is to do because, oh my goodness, lift, pull it like this, push the button, and then plug in. It does its little initialization here. And then we're in. Look at that. Oh, so much easier. Like I said, this charger network, Tesla supercharger network just makes things so much easier. And I'm very excited for other vehicles to switch to the NAX connector, North American charging standard, because I really think that no matter what you drive, you should have this experience of things just being easy for you and, and not having to be dealing with smartphone apps or swiping a car. Just plug it in. It's all done through the back end and it charges and it tells you, you stay here for 20 minutes 
like it's saying here, we're already at 217 kilowatts. Jeez. And then you're good. I mean, this is just, it's seamless. It's just better overall. I mean, we've already added 2.8 kilowatt hours. It's just fantastic. But I did mention, I want to point out a couple things that does bother me about this car. So my hood isn't perfectly aligned on the front. You can see there's like a little bit of a lip right here that isn't on the other side. So on the driver's side, it like juts up a little bit on the fender and that's kind of frustrating. And then both my rear doors, my passenger side and my driver's side, they don't perfectly line up. If you look, there's a little bit of a gap here and it's the same thing on the other side. And that, it doesn't bother me that much, but it's just little quality like Q and QC things that I feel like could be better done and then on the back my inner rear tail light i don't know if you can see it there's a lot more of a gap here than there is on the driver's side and it moves a lot and that's kind of that's very frustrating to me because i come around the back i go to open the back and it isn't perfectly lined and then when i load up or open up the back here something that bothers me about this is my weather seal here it's not perfectly over so if you look over on the other side it comes perfectly over it but on the passenger side it doesn't line up and I've tried like pushing this trim panel and I've tried like just pulling it over and it it just stays like that so I don't know if there's like a screw or something that's missing in there or maybe this interior panel is just not correct maybe it just left the press machine and it got warped somehow but that really frustrates me i haven't noticed any leaks or anything in here it stays pretty dry and it's definitely been raining and everything so it's not the biggest concern but it also is like really frustrating and it is also the paint so i've noticed that the paint scratches very easily and it's very difficult to keep clean like i have a ceramic i put a ceramic coating on here and I'm constantly having the urge to wipe it down. And then I put paint protection film from Test Bros. I did it myself on the front and it came out really well. I think I pointed this out before, but um, one of the things that really frustrated me was the fact that the front bumper, like the headlight or the, this is probably more to do with the Test Bros kit than anything, but the front fog lights didn't seem to line up well with the kit itself. So there's, a little bit of a gap that you can see here on this side and then there's a similar gap on the other side where I think either they just didn't cut it right or the piece itself is something got you know wonky and weird overall I mean I'm happy with how it came out but little things like that and then these windshield wipers I don't know if I just need to clean them thoroughly but they are like Matt they're they're sometimes just not very effective at all like they leave streaks Maybe they're not properly tensioned with the windshield, but I've definitely noticed that there are some issues with the way the windshield wipers work. So just a couple things I wanted to point out. I'm um, gonna wait till this is fully charged, or at least. What is it saying 20 minutes now? What? To continue, it was saying 20 minutes, like five minutes ago. All right, interesting. It's slowed down. All right, we're gonna wait for this to charge up and then uh, head out. Later. So I'm at 71% and I don't know if this is just going to charge up to 80% or like if it's going to prompt me to sit here to charge up to 80% every time because that's where my limit is or if I actually need to go to 80% but the next supercharger is in Medicine Hat, kind of a cool name for town and it looks like it's 152 miles away. And if I do this tap, 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 I have 236 on the clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug because I don't see the need to sit here and get the extra charge. That's plenty of buffer. So I'm gonna go ahead, tap up here, stop charging and unlock charge port. Pull this out and that butthole should close. Yeah. And then just, like that and we're done oh my gosh so easy lady anna morano and that was 15 dollars 
USD. I think it was 20. So the last one was $21 Canadian, so $15, because I just had the charge come across on my Apple card. So not too bad. All right, I'm gonna go find a quick restroom break, maybe grab like a Gatorade or something, and then get back on the road. Things are so much easier dealing with Tesla superchargers. So we're back on the road, and I have gone ahead and I've turned on auto steer with rainbow mode because obvious reasons. But also this stretch is very flat, very straight, very monotonous. And so I kind of want to put on some podcasts and try to like actually keep my brain awake because these longer stretches are the stretches where I tend to get very drowsy. So I think this is actually really going to come in handy except for when it's telling me to keep my hand on the wheel. Um, I do still have the full self-driving with auto steer beta. I think I still have that for a few more weeks with my referral code that I used to buy this. And I might try that after the next supercharger stop. I'm not sure. Um, it just kind of makes me nervous and I, I don't like the idea of the car driving itself. It's not that I'm scared of the technology. It's just that, like I said before, I like driving. The only reason why I have the auto steer turned on is because this section I kind of just want to like be able to listen to something else and have the car do its thing so we'll do that but also it's saying I'm going to get to the supercharger and medicine hat with 39% so I wonder if I missed something on this readout when I was at the supercharger just now where it tells you you only have to be there for this amount of time to be able to get to the supercharger or the next one, or if it automatically defaults to what your preference is, so mine is set at 80%. So I wonder if it's always going to just give me the amount of time that it would take to charge to 80%, because I really don't want to be spending any more time in superchargers if I don't have to. So, for example, that supercharger, I probably could have sat there for five, maybe even ten minutes less if I didn't need to get this kind of a buffer because there's really no need to get a th that kind of a buffer to go to the next supercharger so i'll kind of play around with it in the next supercharger see if i can play with the settings or something maybe look it up while i'm charging but yeah gonna sit back and relax and enjoy this next stretch We are here in Medicine Hat, Alberta. It says that we need to charge for 20 minutes and then we're off to Swift Current, Saskatchewan. We're at 23%, so the next drive is 136 miles, so I'm probably not gonna go to 80%. I might just go to 60%, honestly, just because I don't want to sit here that long, but Let's get plugged in and we'll see what it says. I do kind of want to see. Mm, it doesn't say anything about like, you should only charge this much if you need it. Swift. Mm, okay, let's just plug in. All right, let's grab it. See what it sees. Ramping on up. That is what I like to see. Heck yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna go over to this Starbucks to get a pink drink. Because I need a little bit of a pick-me-up, but I don't drink coffee. I definitely am tired. So one thing about this full self-driving, or not the full self-driving, but the auto steer system is that while I was driving, it kept telling me to put my hands on the wheel. 
but my hands were like this. Like I was gripping it and putting pressure on the steering wheel the whole time. And the car kept telling me like every 15, 20 seconds, put your hands on the wheel, put your hands on the wheel. And I'm like, I, I literally was like almost swerving around in my lane, putting pressure on the steering wheel to tell it that I was paying attention. And then about three quarters of the way here, I get a message that popped up on the screen that says, hey, uh, yo, you're not paying attention, so we're cutting you off. And then another message popped up, I should have gotten it on video, that says that if it cuts off four more times then I no longer have access to the hands-free, which is kind of ridiculous because I had my hands on the wheel and I was putting pressure on it the whole time, but for some reason the car didn't think I was. So I wonder if I need to go through and do a calibration. It's another thing I'm gonna have to look up. I have like a laundry list of things to look up, but anyway, I'm gonna go get a pink drink and I will be back. 12 seconds later. All right, people of YouTube, I figured something out. So I'm looking down here at this bottom tile or it tells me where my next supercharger stop is, stop is in Swift Current, Saskatchewan and it tells me negative 2%. So that tells me that this system, based upon how I drive and weather conditions and everything, that as of right now, with 55% in, I will get there with negative 2%. So I have, it may sound dumb, I have figured out how to basically make sure that I'm not sitting in a charger that much longer than I have to. I mean, I'm not gonna go when it gets to zero because I do at least wanna have a 10% buffer just in case anything happens, especially since there aren't really any alternative Tesla superchargers along this route. But I mean, it still shaves like five minutes off because that means I'll only have to sit here for another likely five minutes in charge instead of eight. I mean, honestly, tomato, tomato, semantics, but I, I figured something out and I'm very proud of myself. So let me have this victory. But on this last drive, I got, look at that, 242 watt hours per mile. That is, I am bad at math. Bring up the browser. All right, so we got 1000 divided by 242. So 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour on this, last, on this drive here. Still doing pretty great overall, 265 watt hours per mile. So, cool. All right, gonna drink my pink drink and have my banana loaf and wait for this to go. Only a couple minutes. All right, I got a little distracted, was eating my banana loaf. All right, so we get there with 14% roughly, at 72%, so it's time to get off of here and get going. I was only here for like 20 minutes. I love these short stops, these are fantastic. $24 Canadian, so $18 roughly US. Be fantastic. Out, butthole close. And there she go. Ah, another easy charge stop. Fantastic. All right. Wait. I'm confused. Now I'm saying I'll get there with 26%. But wait, uh, I'll figure this out at some point. All right, got to continue on. All right, we are in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. And we are gonna plug in again. This is gonna start to seem kind of redundant to a lot of these stops, I'm sorry. But I just want to make sure I'm getting everything on video. I wanna do as many, I wanna film as many stops as I can just to show A, how easy it is, but B, to show how reliable these chargers are, knock on wood, or whatever this white aluminum material is. Oh yeah, I put a new sticker in. Miss Dorothy. That's how I feel about most things. All right, let's go plug in. And again, I'm just, I'm filming these because I really wanted to show how easy this is. It's that, you know, between the route planning and the charging itself. Butthole. There we go. Let's see what it says. Let's see what it says. 
All right. Oh, she ramping up quick. All right, let's see what it says. So this is obviously version three. All right. It's 243 kilowatts, 251 kilowatts. Oh my gosh. This is such a nice change from the 25. No, I'm sorry. Even though those chargers are rated at 25 kilowatts through the Yukon, we were only actually getting like 17 kilowatts. This is so nice. So, sit here for 20 minutes. So far, all of our charging stops have been roughly around 20 minutes. I'm gonna go into the Safeway, use the bathroom, maybe get some water, cause I'm thirsty. And uh, yeah, then continue on. The next stop is gonna be in Regina. And Regina is going to be not only a charging stop, but also a Planet Fitness stop, because I am definitely feeling like I need to move and also take a shower. I kind of want to watch the last episode of Ahsoka because tonight is the finale of that while I'm there. So I might do that in Regina as well. <sighs> I'm conflicted because like, I want to watch the finale of Ahsoka in the car, but I feel, I haven't checked it yet, but I feel like this last episode is going to be over an hour. And between my hour and a half roughly workout and shower and then another hour, hour and a half in the car, I don't know if I want to be in Regina for three hours because I do really want to get a move on. Um, I mean, I could watch it on my phone while I'm at the gym, but my phone screen obviously isn't as large as the one here in the Tesla and the sound system is, I have my AirPod Pros, but you know, their sound system in the Tesla is still superior. I don't know, I'll make a decision. Bathroom time. All right, so 71%. I think that's gonna be my goal because most of these stops are about 150 miles away from each other. So I could think I'm just going to aim for 70% or thereof. I'm, I'm kind of confused by this lower block here because last time it said like 10%. So I assumed that this meant with the current charge, I would get there with 7%. But then I got on the road and I got here at like 25%. So kind of confused. I'm not really... It's got to have something to do with my charge limit. And honestly, I know that this can reliably go 150 miles on 70%. So I'm going to unplug and hit the road again. This last drive was 280 watt hours per mile, which wasn't fantastic, but there was also a lot of headwinds and we were going up and down hills. So not too bad. Almost 3,000 miles traveled. 4,300 on the odometer. Not too bad. So let's go ahead. Tap here on the screen. Stop charge. Unlock charge port. $24 Canadian, so about $19 US. Not bad. Not bad at all. A buggy. Butthole clothes. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Let's hit the road, Jeeves. Well, people of the internet, of the YouTubes, we have arrived in Regina, Saskatchewan. It's a lovely town full of lovely people doing whatever it is that they do. So this Tesla supercharger is at a Canadian Tire Superstore. I, I don't really know if they just only sell tires here, but it looks like they also sell playing, fixing, and living, as well as garden. So... Tire sells garden and living. I'm I'm confused. We uh got here with 18. Come on, focus. 18%. It is telling I need to be here for 20 minutes. Standard procedure. And the next one is only in 104 miles away. So I think I'm gonna stay here. Eh, go to 70% like normal, because that means that the next stop I won't have to stay there as long. So we're gonna charge up and then after this, I'm gonna head over to the Planet Fitness in Regina because I am tired of sitting. Ooh, I get really close this time around. All right, butthole, butthole plug. Uh-oh, all right, button, charge, initiate, do your thing. And then, we're all set. 
simple, easy. Love it. You know, it really sucks how short these charging stops are. I mean, before I'd have hours to kill to just watch YouTube and walk around bored because I had no cell service, but <sighs> only stopping for 18 minutes. I barely even have time to go through my emails. I don't, ugh, this is genuinely terrible. I don't know what I'm gonna do about this, but I mean, I guess we should probably just go. That's what the, what everything's saying. You should probably just get on out of here, you know, skedaddle. So go ahead and pull it out of the butt. Go ahead and close, but here we go. Put this back where it goes and a little crazy there. Guess we'll just head over to Planet Fitness just like that because, you know, my car has no sense of chill. No sense of chill! All right. 10 seconds later. All right, here at the Planet Fitness in Regina, this place, I think it's a sketch one. I don't know, but I am looking forward to this workout very much. I have all my gym stuff here. Okay. Time to go. Time to go in. Okay. Future people of the internet. Workout was a success. Jim was very busy. But also, quite a few attractive people in here. Whatever town this is, y'all got something going on. Alright, so we're headed to White Castle. I don't know what the, nah, the name of this next town is, I'll be honest with you, can't pull it up. So we're gonna head to the next supercharger, we're gonna charge up, and then I'm gonna find a place to car camp for the night because I am getting tired. So we shall get this show on the road, do a little bit of night driving, hopefully we can open it up a little bit since there's no one out here, and have a good old time. Yeah. So it's super dark outside, but it's a beautiful night out there. I kind of wish that there wasn't so much light pollution or else I would take some pictures, but we're about 23, 22 miles away, 22 minutes away from the next super tractor stop. But I don't know if I'm going uphill or if there's just prevailing winds, but I'm getting horrible efficiency. 303 watt hours per mile. I'm kind of confused as to what's going on. I wonder if it has anything to do with the temperature dropping and maybe the battery's just cold, but that's kind of horrible, especially considering the fact that like the average, even when going up and down mountains, was 267. Kind of strange. Something that I did notice about this system that does kind of annoy me is I find it really difficult to keep the windshield from fogging up when it's cold outside. So I have tried all different combinations of things and it's not fogging up right now, but I also like had to open a rear window and I like do all different sorts of combinations with the HVAC system. Maybe it's because I keep it lower, like 60, 62 degrees and I'm having this issue. Maybe turning it up to a higher temperature will help, but I get really hot really quickly but just an observation and it's all the windows like all the windows in this car love to fog up as soon as I start breathing so it's kind of frustrating but on the flip side I did also want to point out we crossed 3,000 miles I was sort of listening to a podcast so I wasn't paying attention but woof 3,000 down about 1,500 more to go roughly All right, we're up at 75%. I'm gonna cut it there because I am falling asleep. So, stop the charging, unplug port, turn this down because this is annoying me. Again, I need to just get some anti-fog stuff for this windshield and these windows because this is really annoying. All right, go back here, make sure that it's unlocked because there seems to be a delay or something. All right. 
Butthole close. Butthole close. Butthole close. Thank you. There we go. Right where you deserve to go. Alright. 76%. I don't know if you can see this. I thought I was going to pull over there. Nope. That is a massive mud catastrophe waiting for me to get stuck. Alright, maybe I'll find an asphalt area and hope that I don't mud everywhere. This is wild. It's gotta be like a place I can go out front, right? It's gotta be something. Maybe some place I can park. It's like kind of out of the way, but also like. Kind of the problem is that like there's nothing. I and mean, I guess I can just park over here by the canopy and just try to get out of here early in the morning. Shut up! I know my seatbelt is not. I'll be fine. I promise. Well, now that my car is fully covered in mud, presumably. Giant drop off over here. Holy crap. All right, I'm gonna call it here. Maybe you should go somewhere. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it here. This is good. This'll be good. Ugh, all right, end of day eight. Wasn't quite as productive as I wanted it to be in terms of driving, but I did get a pretty decent distance today. I think. I think we went like 400 miles. I don't actually remember what I started out this morning. I'm really bad at this. I'm really bad at this. I really should be writing these mileages down and everything. Oi. All right. I need sleep. Putting an end to this day. Good night. Sleep tight. Well, hello and good morning. Good morning, good morning. It is the start of day nine. I'm here in the town where I currently am. I should probably know where I'm at. Anyways, so just got up, went and got changed because I realized I needed to change my clothes this morning. Made my morning Athletic Greens protein drink with my little blend jet here. Oh my gosh, dropping stuff on the ground. So I'm gonna run in and try to use the bathroom because my insides, I am not feeling very well this morning. I don't know if it's something that I ate yesterday, but I'm going to go and try to utilize the little men's room as much as I can. And then I'm going to hit the road. So today is going to be a very long travel day. I mean, every day is a long travel day, but today I'm really going to try and make some progress. I haven't quite decided where I want to end up today. I want to try and get as far east as I physically can, just because I get, I am getting to a point where I'm tired of sitting so much. And this mattress is not, it was comfortable on day one through like four, but now my back hurts all the time. So, such is life. So this is kind of crude. <laughs> I really need to apologize to these people at this uh, co-op in Whitewood, Saskatchewan for uh, what I've just done. First time in my life, somebody knocked on the restroom stall door and asked me if I was okay. Um, so that's how my morning's going so far. <laughs> kind of reminded me of the time that I decided to eat like half of a bag of sugar-free gummies and um, then proceeded to spend four hours in the bathroom. Honestly thought I was dying. And like, I don't know what it is that I ate yesterday. I don't know what it is that is going on inside of me, but that was not appropriate. I apologize to the people of Whitewood because that was probably quite rude of me. All right, so I'm gonna skedaddle because I'm thoroughly embarrassed. So we are leaving 71% on the clock. 3,040 miles so far traveled. Hopefully we get better efficiency this morning while we're driving. 
I thought about it and I actually looked at some topography maps last night as I was trying to lay down and go to sleep and it looks like just sort of like a steady uphill incline is what happened yesterday afternoon and evening. So that explains why efficiency was so bad. But all right, time to get back on the road. Pray to my bear bells that today goes well. On a side note, I am kind of disappointed because I didn't watch the new Ahsoka episode last night. So I'm going to have to do that at some point today. But at this point, I'm going to probably wait till tonight because the glare off this big screen can be kind of intense. So hope you're doing well so far. If you're watching this video, thank you so much for continuing to watch this video series. It's, uh, I realize I'm probably not doing the best job of keeping track of things, but I'm going to write down the mileage right now so that I can keep track of something today. Oh, goodness. Five minutes later. <sighs> On the road again. But we are headed to our next supercharger stop. Probably can't see it because of the glare, but... It's saying we have 114 miles to go. We have 70% in the battery right now, and we'll get there with roughly 26%. I turned on auto steer, and it's doing the same thing that it was doing yesterday. So my hand is here. I'm paying attention to the road. I'm putting pressure on the steering wheel, and I'm getting these notifications on the screen that says, please put your hand on the steering wheel, apply pressure. So I'm gonna be very upset if this decides that it wants to cut off and not work because I'm holding the steering wheel and I'm looking, I may be, I may be shooting a video, but I'm looking out the window. I'm looking out the windscreen while I'm pointing this camera where I know it needs to look. It's very frustrating. I really need to look and see if I need to calibrate this because this is very annoying. Of course, now that I'm getting it on video, it's not going to do it because Tesla is recording me through this camera up here. Oh, there's Rose. Hi, Rose. Annoying. I will also say I do wish that there was a little bit more of a customization option with this UI. So I wish that, like with rainbow mode, I wish it was more all-encompassing and not just changing the lane color itself that you're traveling in to a rainbow. I wish that you could also customize this. So I, I do kind of wish that there was like a home screen that wasn't the map that you could do like custom backgrounds on or even like adjust tiles or something like that like it can like BMW or Mercedes um just little things because I feel like especially since Teslas are all pretty much the same you get all the same interiors I do kind of wish that there was more customization options within the screen itself just to kind of make it your own like you know, you can do stickers and you can do, you know, things like pumpkins or whatever. But, you know, I do wish that there was a way to customize the screen itself. So, party. arrived in the beautiful town of Brandon, Manitoba. Look at this metropolis. Oh my goodness. These people are so lucky. I got here with 32% battery, so not bad. So it wants us to charge for 15 minutes. I'm probably gonna go up to 70 like I have been. And it's 133 miles to Winnipeg. Kind of a longer drive. That's kind of weird that it's 133 miles, but two hours, 41 minutes. Must be traffic, but let's go plug in real quick. Look at how close I'm getting to these poles. Gosh, I am so good at this. I am just killing it. All right. Heck yeah love to see it. Oh, look at this. Look at this mess that I made last night. Look at this mess. Because I drove through that mud. I wasn't paying attention. Look at this mess. 
we'll have to get a car wash at some point soon. All right, charging what we got. 12 minutes for a minute. Look at 226 kilowatts at 32%. I cannot tell you how much I'm loving this right now. On the, on the flip side, I'm really not feeling well today. I'm not sure if it's just all this time on the road starting to affect me. I got like a headache, my body hurts. Gosh, I hope I didn't catch anything. I mean, there really isn't anything around here for food. I could go into Walmart, I guess, and grab something from there. I might grab a banana or something, but there really isn't much around here for food. I am, um, I also just am enjoying the sunlight. I like sunlight, sunlight on the skin. Wish it was just a tad warmer. I'd wear sh short sleeve shirts, but. Yeah. I'm curious. So I'm pretty sure that, yes, this is a version three because the the output. And this one was made in Buffalo, New York, at Buffalo Mega Factory. It's kind of cool. Output 250 kilowatts. Heck yeah. Let's go, buddy. All right, time to go get some food real quick. While I'm waiting, I'm just gonna do a walk around to the car, and I am very happy that I put this paint protection film on the front. This is by Test Bros, and I'll have the link in the description. If you use my code, I don't have a code, you get 0% off, because I don't have a code, because this isn't sponsored by anyone. But, I'm very happy I did that, because the amount of stuff that's been thrown up on this hood is rather insane. And I'm so very proud of myself for doing it because I did it myself and I think it came out really well. But yeah, I made a mess of this thing last night. I was like, wasn't even intending to do that either because I just didn't even, I didn't even see the mud. It was so dark last night when I pulled into that rest area. Didn't even see the mud. Let's see what you're at because if I don't have to, if I don't have to sit here any longer, then I'm not going to. Look at that! You have enough energy to continue your trip. We're at 65, well, eh, 65, 70% is what I've been wanting to stick at anyway. I really, I will say, I do really like this system because I know that lithium ion battery packs like to live their lives basically in the middle of the pack's capacity. So for optimal longevity, it's best to run these things between like 25 and 75%. I've seen, I've seen some as narrow as like 35, 40 to 60%. I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. Nor could I do that on this trip. But I really like how that's kind of the range that I've been in. And that was kind of a concern of mine when I first purchased this and I knew that I was going to be doing this trip was, you know, doing this much driving, this much supercharging this early in the car's life. I mean, we only have 4,600 miles on it. But I do like that it's kind of staying to the middle of the pack in terms of charge, because I think that'll really optimize my long-term. Because I, I will say, when I get back to Massachusetts and just sort of long-term, I plan on sort of keeping this between 30 and 70% anyway. So that's really how it works. 17% CAD, 60 cents per kilowatt hour, not bad. So it's gonna be like $13. I'll have to post the statistics or at least go over it in like a wrap-up video of how much total I've spent, but uh, spoiler alert, I've spent significantly less on this trip with an electric vehicle than I did when I went up to Alaska in a Subaru Forester. So, all right, let's hit stop charging, unlock butthole. I don't know why I like saying that. You know what? I do know why I like saying it. I'm not going to lie. All right. Pull it out. Butthole closes. Like I said, I just, I show this because it's so much easier. It's just so much easier than dealing with all the CCS and the adapters and it's all just seamless. All right, so 69%, <laughs> very nice. Oh, I'm a child. Um, so 133 miles till we get there, two hours, 31 minutes. I'm gonna stop off, there's a Starbucks over yonder down the Chattahoochee and then there's a a Tim Hortons, not too far away. I'm gonna stop off there and get some actual food. Or maybe I'll just get food from Starbucks because they have good food. I don't know. Either way, let's go.
Guess where I'm at? It's a conundrum. <laughs> so today is supposed to be my leg day because I'm on a three day split. So push, pull, push, push day, pull day, then leg day. But I'm not feeling 100% today. So I think I might just hop on the bike for like 45 minutes and then just do some light squat. I really just want a nice hot shower for me completely honest, but I need to stay active. Gotta do something since I'm sitting so much. So off to do something in this gym, something, anything. You now see me freshly showered, freshly work, hot off the presses of a leg day. So I actually did do a full leg day and I, I actually feel a lot better. I, like, I think I sweat, I sweat a lot, but I think that also helped me out. And I have to say this plan of fitness here in Manitoba, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Winnipeg, as one of the like kitschiest showers I have ever experienced. Like the shower that I just took is the best shower that I've had in months. Like all my days of traveling around Alaska, staying in hotels, but also like backcountry camping and everything. That was the best shower I've taken in a while. <laughs> it's kind of sad actually. Um, so now I have a decision to make because this is kind of a crossroads. I can either shoot across Canada, like through Toronto, cross at either Niagara Falls or go down through um, Vermont, or I can go south into, I think North Dakota is directly, or maybe Minnesota. My geography isn't very good. So I do have a decision to make and I think I'm gonna go find some dinner and then make that decision because it kind of depends what I want to do. So if I go south, like neither of the options are better. So if I do the northern route, it's a little bit more scenic, I think. And I get to potentially go through Niagara Falls, which I haven't been through Niagara Falls in probably five years. So that would be nice. But on the, but on the other side, that part of Canada is really rural. And well, then again, so is North Dakota, South Dakota and all that. I mean, if I go south, I have to look at it I might be able to go to like Mount Rushmore, which I've never been to, but then again, I don't know. I'm gonna find some dinner and then I will let you know what my decision is. A few inches later. All right, so I had a cilantro lime bowl at Tim Hortons and it was fantastic, may I say. I looked at the routing, looked at the maps. I've decided to head south because there are a couple of different routes I can take if I stay in Canada but the, post the options are more numerous if I go south in terms of my routing east-west. Um, and I also don't know, and nor do I f really feel like it's necessary to research it, to be honest with you. I don't know if there's a time limit on how long you can be in Canada before you have to like apply for something, like a visa or something. And I've already been in Canada six days, seven days. And if I take the east through Canada down through Vermont route, then I'm gonna be in Canada for likely another two days. I really don't want to potentially cause any issues with Canadian immigration because I really like this country and I would really like to come back. So we're gonna head south. We're headed down to Morris, Manitoba to a supercharger. So we'll get there roughly 11% in the battery. And then from there, I think that's only like 30 or 40 miles from the border, maybe, I hope. So we should be crossing back into the US tonight, hopefully, hopefully. Every time I do this trip, every time I do this trip without fail, I come into Canada, Canadian immigration doesn't care. They're like, oh yeah, the, your, your passport you're passing through, cool, whatever, have fun. I go into the US from Canada, whether I'm only in Canada for a couple of days or I'm here for a week or two, Almost every time, there's only been one exception, my car gets searched. I pull up, hand on my passport, tell them what I was doing, tell them I come from Alaska, headed to the East Coast. Without fail, they pull me over and they search the car. And it's like a two hour ordeal. Last time it happened, I was crossing over at Niagara Falls. Uh, this was back in 2017. And they, they called a drug dog out and like ripped my car apart and then left everything on the asphalt surrounding my car. And the 
border security agent that was there just smiled at me and says, have a great day and walked away. And it took me 30 minutes to get everything back in my car on top of the three hours that I was sitting at the border. It's incredibly frustrating. That's another reason why I am wanting to cross here because last time I went east, I had issues. Hopefully that doesn't happen this time. We'll see. We'll see. Well, hello. It's my face. So we are here at the supercharger in uh, Morris. There we go. Maris. Morris. Maris. Moira Rose. We're in Moira, Alberta. And we're going to go ahead and plug in here. I haven't plugged in any new destination yet because I need to take a look at and see where the border is and kind of figure out where I want to go tonight. Um, so let's go get plugged in. I think this time I'm just going to keep it on my face just to show that I am not putting in any effort when I do this. Like, look at my face. I'm literally putting in no effort. I'm not straining. I'm not struggling and there we go she's charging so Sitna is charging it's the name of my Tesla I think I've said it before all right we got 20 minutes remaining until we get to 70 percent so I did adjust my charging limit down to 70 percent just because I would like to try to stay between 20 30 ish percent and 70 percent I don't really see any point to go any higher um I would actually like tonight I'm going to look on PlugShare once I get across the border. Um, I do want to try and find a place where I might be able to overnight camp and stay plugged in and charge it up to 80% because I know there's no consequence. I know that probably wouldn't matter any. I know that there are studies and people out there that have Teslas that do nothing with supercharge and their longevity is fine. But I do want to not be supercharging all the time if I can help it. And I figure at least getting one overnight charge would be great. So I'm going to take a look and see where I'm headed, where I might be able to camp out overnight, and then take it from there. I also have a bunch of emails I need to go through, but I don't know, maybe I'll tweet till tomorrow. We've hit 70% on the chargey chargey. Lots of electrons in this car. Not too bad cost. $20 Canadian, so like $23 US, something like that. So we're only about 25 miles away from the border. So we'll get through the border and then I think I'll try to aim for Fargo, North Dakota tonight. Maybe a little bit beyond that. Just because North Dakota can be kind of interesting. So unplug, get this going. Oh wait, hang on. I forget to do this. Gotta unlock the charge port so that I can pull it out. And then I can put it where it goes. Heck yeah. Oh, all closed already. Oh no. I like to cover that on the video. Alright. Okay, there we go. Alright. Let's hit the road, Jack. Head south, get across the border, and then off to Fargo. Yay! All right, we are through customs and border control, patrol, patrol. That took like 15 seconds. See, of course, you know, I say something and of course there's no problem. The guy was super chill. He was like, oh yeah, all right, cool. Bye, see you later. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. All right, so I'm gonna plug in, I'm gonna plug in a supercharger somewhere. Let's see what we got. Should probably pull over. Yay, North Dakota! All right, let's see what we got. I did put my pumpkin away. Looks like our next supercharger stop will be... Let's see if we can make it. I wonder if we can make it to Fargo. 149 miles, 199 miles. Let's see what it says. It says we'll get there with 3%, which is doable. Okay, so we'll go to Fargo. Cool. All right, see you in Fargo. 
just an update. Here we go. So it's 1024 at night. We're about uh, exactly, almost exactly an hour out from the Fargo Supercharger. Figure, since it's raining outside and I can't really do any like running footage of outside, like I normally would, give me an update. So efficiency is not too bad, 277 watt hours per mile, but I've definitely had the message pop up on the screen a couple times saying that I need to stay under 75, which is the speed limit. So I'm doing 60, and I'm kind of glad that there's no one really around because I know the people in Montana, North Dakota, this part of the country, they go flying around, and they are not happy when they come across people that are going slower. So I'm very grateful for that. So we'll get there around 4% charge. It's slower than I wanted, but I didn't see any point in stopping off at the supercharger that was, I think it was about 10 miles back. I didn't really see any point in it. Just continue on to the one in Fargo. So that is what I shall do. And then once I hit up Fargo and the supercharger there, I'm probably just going to find a place to pull over and crash for the night because at that point it'll be 1130, about 20 minutes to charge. So almost midnight by the time I actually get done charging and everything, so I think that might be a good time to call it on today, but we'll see. We shall see. We've arrived in Fargo, North Dakota with 3% charge. 276 kilowatt. No, nope, wait, nope, that's not right. 276 watt hours per mile in beautiful Fargo, North Dakota. Fargo is named after the popular TV show Fargo. It was actually renamed Fargo after Fargo when Fargo became a show. Looked it up on Wikipedia. You should definitely do your research. All right, so let's get this plugged in. This one, I wanted to charge at this sideways bad boy. Sideways boy. Oh no, I don't know if this is gonna reach though. Let's take a look and see. Let's see if it reaches, cause... Oh yeah, it'll reach, okay. It's just kind of an interesting arrangement here. All right, button for the butthole. There we go. There we go. There we go. I think I'm slowly losing my mind. I apologize. All right, so we got 25 minutes till we get to 25%. I'm going to hopefully go over to Casey's and go to the bathroom. There's a truck parked over there, so I'm hoping it means it open. But I'm going to charge up to 25%. Or I'm, getting, I'm getting tired. I'm going to charge up to 70%, and then we're going to head out. Um, I think there's a rest area not too far outside of Fargo. That I'm gonna pull off at. Oh, do some car camping. <sighs> this is so annoying. This windshield situation. So just gonna wait for it to charge. 240, 52 kilowatts. Woo! Did you ever imagine such a thing in the Yukon? No, you could not. All right. So the key, the Casey's is closed. So I guess we'll just have to hang out here. But fun tip, if you're in Fargo, North Dakota, and it's winter time, and you need something to warm your hands up, just grab the cable. This cable's gotta be like, ooh, the closer you get, it gets pretty warm down here. Oh my goodness. That is actually surprisingly warm. I didn't take you long for that unplugging journey. It is uh, kind of pouring outside right now, as you can kind of see over my shoulder. So I didn't want to take the phone or the gimbal my dji gimbal thingy thingy outside but up to 69 percent i'm actually curious what was in my last one so uh, it was 20 us dollars to charge up to 70 percent so plan at this point is i was looking online and it looks like really nice. so it looks like there are a couple rest areas um i'm sure anyone that's traveled you know exactly what i'm talking about but 
um, along US interstate highways we have our rest areas we usually have some like restroom buildings and they're usually pretty well lit you see a lot of people camping out there in like RVs and stuff so I'm going to hop on interstate 94 southbound towards Minneapolis and I'm going to basically driving until I see this rest area. Um, I don't anticipate driving for more than like 45 minutes because at this point it is 1230 and I am definitely getting to a point where I am wanting to sleep. Um, I also don't want to drive too far because I obviously need to make sure that I have enough battery for camping mood so that I don't get too cold tonight. Drive on 94 until we hit this rest area, see where things go and uh yeah, I guess I'll check back in once we get to the rest area. You know, I will say one of the most frustrating things is this automatic windshield wipers. And I know I talked about it before and over and about it before. I cannot stand these automatic windshield wipers, especially when you have adaptive cruise control on or the autopilot, whatever you want to call it. They are so ridiculously inconsistent sometimes it'll be sprinkling or even just pouring rain and they won't activate at all like one of act to activate at all i have to keep hitting this button on the left uh stock in order to clear it off so either they won't activate at all or they go like hyper ridiculously fast when it's just sprinkling outside and it, it just bought it annoys the living you know what out of me when I just see the windshield wipers just going like this on the windshield and I'm like there's barely any water on the windshield why are, why are you activating right now it's very frustrating it's very aggravating one of the few like consistent issues that I have as I drive along but all right gonna go look for this rest area all right so we have reached the rest area outside of, I think this is Alexandria. Let's see. Yeah, Alexandria, Minnesota. All right, so we've got 105 miles. Today in total, we've done almost 600 miles. We left this morning with 3,036 and we're ending with 3,627. So almost 600 miles today. Not bad, let's see if I can repeat that or even go slightly further tomorrow um so we're about 29 percent state of charge plenty for camping overnight and the closest supercharger to here is not that far at all if i can get this oriented right yeah closest supercharger is a 20 minute drive so we will be perfectly fine for tomorrow so i'm calling a lid i'm tired end of day honestly i don't remember <laughs> end of day eight i think yeah end of day eight. let's just go with that all right good night